If you're looking for an action-packed game, easy on your pockets, and will give you some laughs, Army of Two might just be for you. Grab a buddy if you can because it only makes for a better ride. Let's take a blast in the past for this 2008 release title and decide whether it's still worthy of checking it out. This is my Army of Two game review. Army of Two is primarily a third person shooter which although is heavily made for cooperative gameplay is still a solid single player experience. The story revolves around Tyson Riles and Elliot Salem, the protagonists who are in the Army Rangers and then turn into an Army of Two working for the private military sector to make a living. Throughout the campaign as you play deeper into the plot killing your way from warlords to terrorists, Riles begins to suspect a conspiracy is unfolding within the privatized army. I won't say any more than this so the story doesn't get ruined for those who haven't played it yet. The story is interesting enough to keep you slightly entertained, but it's fairly predictable without any truly surprising twists. That isn't necessarily a bad thing, as the developers weren't aiming for an award-winning plot. It's just to say, don't expect a deep or thought-provoking storyline. Although I do have to mention, I personally grew tired of the constant focus on individuals with Muslim names as the enemies. Even when the game takes you to China, the bad guy was a Muslim. That grew to be cliched and gimmicky in the plot, but eventually changed course by the end of the game. The voice acting, however, in my opinion, is one of Army of Two's core strengths. The dialogue between Rios and Salem throughout the gameplay and even the cutscenes is believable and at times straight up hysterical. It's obvious that EA's Montreal Studios was going for a down-to-earth college frat boy personality for the two mercenaries, and they nailed it. I found myself looking forward to the next cutscene just to hear an exchange between them. Their constant bickering and joking adds a lot to the mood of the game. The rest of the characters have average voice acting, but it's noteworthy to mention that the dialogue as a whole doesn't take itself too seriously. It's a subtle balance between comedy and action. So it's not unlikely to hear some over-the-top jargon coming out of a character. For example... Keeping in mind that this game was released in 2008, the visuals are nothing special but they get the job done well. They're easy on the eyes and don't have any major issues. The cutscenes also look very good. While not spot on when it comes to realism, the audio of the surroundings and gunfire is decent and well done for an action-packed feel. Army of Two's gameplay is highly interactive with the second AI or human partner. You start off by choosing which protagonist you would like to assume the identity of, and from there you will embark on a cooperative adventure. The very first thing you will notice when you start playing is that the guns have a lot of recoil, making it almost impossible to be a professional shooter in this game. Turning towards enemies while aiming can also be slow, assumingly because of the heavy equipment the mercenaries carry. Although this can be a nuisance for some, it just means that you have to be extra careful with aiming and not run into the battle like a headless chicken. I personally found it as enjoyable and more rewarding when getting accurate headshots. It's easy for someone to jump the bandwagon and scream clunky controls, but in reality, the controls are fine. Aiming the gun is just simply harder, which means more self-control on the trigger finger is required. Once you're used to it, it's a joyful ride. The main concept of the gameplay revolves around the agrometer. This shows you how much attention you are attracting to yourself by gunfire and attacks while simultaneously drawing it away from your partner, making him practically invisible to the enemy. That is until he draws the attention back to himself, making you undetected. Or alternatively, you both can say, what the heck, and just go for it like maniacs, which may not be the smartest idea at times because as you progress further in the game, you realize the essentialness of teamwork to move on. To achieve this cooperation, the game provides you with four commands you can give your partner. Each of these commands has a variation of staying low key or being more aggressive. They work very well, even when playing with an AI buddy. Of course, playing alone isn't perfect and there are times you wish a real brain was helping you play, but I was pleasantly surprised how cooperative your partner can be. If you accumulate enough attention to yourself for a consistent amount of time, your character glows red and goes on a slow motion killing spree. And that's fun. Aside from all this, you can even make taunts interacting with your partner and he will taunt you back. Yet another example of how down to earth Ryos and Salem are portrayed to be. You can also switch weapons with your partner, although I never found the need to do so during my entire playthrough. Speaking of weapons, you have slots for primarily three guns and one grenade. The guns are of three types, primary, secondary and special. Primary weapons are the usual assault rifles and others, secondaries are pistols and such, and special are snipers and rocket launchers. I enjoyed the gunplay in the game and I found it to be solid overall with some rough edges here and there. 
In addition to all this, there are some fun back-to-back -back action sequences, much like what you see in the movies. Ryos and Salem are many times outnumbered and have no choice but to go back-to-back -back for shooting the enemies around them. When such sequences occur, the camera goes into slow motion and you get to have some old-fashioned fun. There are also some missions where you control a parachute or drive a hovercraft on water. I personally enjoyed the parachute missions. The hovercraft, on the other hand, although were not horrible, just weren't as enjoyable and the vehicle controlled a little oddly. There are some other really cool things in the gameplay which I haven't touched on, but I'll let you explore them yourself. One great thing about this game is that it's not short of content for you to enjoy. As you complete missions, you earn money which can then be used for weapon customization and upgrades. There are even special optional objectives that if you complete, you can make even more money for customization galore. You have weapons ranging from an AK-47 to a minigun, you can suit up your armor to heavier options as you progress through the game, and you have options to change masks, and the list goes on and on. Overall, the content of this game is fairly decent and will not disappoint those enthusiastic about personalizing their experience. The game doesn't take long to get used to. If you ever get confused about where to go or what your objective is, you can always pull up your navigation which guides you straight to where you need to be. The objectives are very simple to understand and pretty much straightforward. Although I have to reiterate that you should not expect to perfect your shot, because quite simply, it will probably never happen. You may get better as you go along, but it won't always be spot on, unless you spend a considerable amount of time on it. The controls are the typical third person shooter style with some tactical elements to take charge of all the commands. They are responsive, with no standout issues, and pretty much do as you command them. Although, there were some exceptions with the command buttons. Sometimes I found it took longer for my AI buddy to react to my commands to stop or go. Other than that, there are no major complaints. If you have played mini shoot and cover games, you will most likely find the controls are intuitive when it comes to that arena. It may take you some time however to get used to the different commands and what they precisely do and the difference between using the aggressive versus passive alterations of them, but it shouldn't take you more than two missions to fully grasp all the controls. It seems the game's purpose is to achieve a chilled out down to earth style while providing a fun experience. It succeeds in both aspects. The developers were also definitely trying to bring something new to the table with the new heavily team oriented mechanics. They certainly nailed cooperative gameplay and it is unique, something that other games of the same intention would probably mimic. However, it is not unique enough to blow our minds away or make us feel as if it's an entirely new experience. It still needs some refinements to achieve this. The game tries to appeal to the younger adults amongst us, from the elder teens to the mid-twenties, who like to have a good laugh here and there while enjoying a bit of action. It's also trying to appeal to the cooperative player gamers while not losing the single player crowd. And that's an ingenious idea. When you have a game that is great in co-op, it makes sense that more people will buy it. If I want to play with my friends, then I will likely encourage them to buy it so they can play it with me. Personally, although I love to game with others, I don't always have the time for it, so I game alone majority of the time. And this game still appealed to me and I didn't feel out of the circle. However, it didn't drastically shine above other games. With that said, it would be a much better game when played with a friend and would definitely be special. In short, EA Montreal Studios succeeded in its target audience. The only issue with this is that many people play alone, which is probably why this game didn't stand out because to those who didn't play co-op probably didn't see the big deal. Because let's face it, AI partners can be fun, as in this game, but they will never be as interactive or creative as a human being. In my opinion, this game is not for kids because of the strong language. Every person will have their own opinions regarding what they would or would not allow for their kids. For me, I would introduce this game to my son or daughter if I had one although I can see it could be a nice father-son bonding activity when I think about it, but I would save it for a more mature age which will less likely be negatively influenced by the game. When it comes to guests on the other hand, this game would be great if you had a friend or two over because of the co-op campaign. I can definitely see myself playing this with some of my friends coming for a barbecue or laid back get together. It probably would not be as good however if you had a lot of people over mainly because of the learning curve and the fact that it's a campaign oriented game. It won't be as fun passing the control. Also because of the nature of this game, I would say it would not be of much interest for a non-gamer. It's mainly for those familiar with games or have interest in it. 
it's not universal enough for others to explore, in my opinion. And now, for the moment you are all waiting for, the rating for this game, the purpose of any review, the purpose of any man and woman for watching this video, what rating do I give it? I give this game a rating of... You should play. Although it has a few kinks here and there, I recommend that you play this game if you can get it for the price of $15 or less. To top it off, this game gets a stamp for being... Underrated. I don't feel people gave this game enough of a chance when it came out, and many may have passed on it. Overall, it's a solid game and there's lots of fun to have with it. For more videos and reviews, be sure to check out my channel, and if you haven't done so already, subscribe. Peace.